I think, I probably said this to you before, I think Barry Heffernan is now one of Tipperary's most important players. He's at that perfect age now where he's physically developed, he has the experience, and like he's just a powerhouse of an athlete, and he's got great hurling. And when he comes out with the ball, he doesn't get sent backwards, which is what happens to you a little bit as you get become an older player. You're no longer just bursting through that first tackle. You've been sent the other way, and then all of a sudden you're leaning back and trying to strike and clear the ball. So I... I just think he's a massive player, and his absence last year for some of those games early on the championship, especially against Limerick, was so keenly felt, as it was with Seamus Kennedy. So this is one of the big things that Tipper... Like, think about the match last year against Limerick when, when, uh, when the Premier started out their season. It was down in Cork in the depths of winter, rotten rain, lots of injuries. Paddy Maher had a, a knee injury coming into it. As I said, Barry Heffernan and Seamus Kennedy... They weren't available. Even John Maher had been drafted in from the footballers and just thrown in at the deep end. Very tough day for him. Dan McCormick wasn't started. Michael Breen, who you know didn't have a great game the last day against Watford, he wasn't started. This is a Tipperary team that'll be very different coming into this now. They've had a nice training block for a few weeks, while other teams have probably been focused a little bit more on, like Watford obviously was the big focus of Brian Lowe in the last couple of weeks. I think Tipperary come into this game now, summer sod, you know, I, I, I really think Tip have no excuse here now. Everyone's probably carrying an injury or two somewhere along the lines. But in general, they have most of the players they want. The likes of Paddy Cadell has gotten more game time. They've tried some of the younger players in the league. This is where I'm on Liam Sheedy's side. They've tried plenty of the younger lads in the forward line, especially during the league, and they haven't really impressed. You know, let's call a spade a spade. They're going to need a little bit more time. We won't start naming out players, but they haven't really impressed. But I think Tipperary, if they come out with fire in their belly, and this is often the thing with Tipperary, you know after five minutes whether you're going to see a performance or not because are, are they in the faces of the opposition? We'll know very quickly here if Tipperary are. I think if Tipperary come out with fire, they do win this game. And I'm not saying, I, I think Clare are improving all the time and better than we probably thought early in the year. But I think Tipperary have enough for to not necessarily be up for debate in the last five minutes, ten minutes. No, I tend to agree with you, Shane. But honestly, it's funny. Like I, I did tip Waterford to get to the Munster final before anything started, and I, I do think Waterford is the sort of team that uh, that could have really, uh, could have really struggled or you know made Tipperary struggle somewhat, like they did in the league game, just for the pace that they have. But uh, I, I do see, I do see Tip in a different proposition. Um, since they, they did, they did enough in the league to to impress and I do expect it to go up another gear. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Hickey, if Claire run the ball past the tip half tip half back line, tip will struggle. I think Aidan McCarthy is ready to explode. Uh, I think he was being roared at for probably hitting one way too many the last day, but some of his performances in the league and just you can see athletically this lad is like he's he's a serious machine and he's got scores and Kyle Malone at midfield, we've kind of talked about him I think I'd, I'd love to have, if it was ever over a team, you'd love to have a few Cottle Malones. Yeah, He's just yeah. so honest, he works so hard. Generally, his hurling has come on an awful lot too. He do, he always does the right thing with the ball now and can take a score now. I think he's so, such an unsung player. Yeah, Derek McGrath and Anthony Daly were talking earlier in the week about how Brian Lowen was listening to the players at the end of, of last season, which was uh, year one for him. And he goes, it's a powerful bit of management. Some managers would have thrown the toys out of the pram and said, you won't dictate to me what way we go about this. I think it's a massive sign. Shows that you're vulnerable. Put your hand up and say, I'm vulnerable on things, lads. I might, I might bring a whole pile of positives, but I have things to learn at this level. And to take guidance from John Conlon and Tony Kelly, Cahill Malone, you can imagine the leaders there. And that's true. I mean... Brian Lowen hadn't managed at this level before. Of course, he'd been involved with clubs. I think he was with Cratlow and UL. But you do have to listen to your players. Like, you're not going to know it all on day one. And, like, especially when Brian Lowen is fighting such a battle with the county board, the people above him, like, he wants people that are, you know, ostensibly above him to listen down a tier. I mean, he's obviously smart enough to know, well, in my job and what I'm trying to achieve, I have to listen to the lads who are, you know, kind of underneath me too. So uh, fair play to him if that is the case. It's a funny one, Shane. I'm sure you've had plenty of managers. God knows I've had them tell you exactly where to go. Uh, unceremoniously tell you where to go if you try to give them any advice on anything. Um, ah, but the best ones do listen. I mean, they're yeah, the game with their players. The, the best because... ones, really, I think, Shane, that in life in general even, you should you should always be willing to take uh, an opinion on board. You never know who you might pick up something from. And I've noticed that a lot in recent years. Someone that could say something to you, even I'd be out selling lotto back when the pubs were open. 
uh, on a Saturday night and someone could say something to you about hurling, someone that you didn't even think knew anything about hurling, you'd be like, Jesse he kind of has a point there. I don't think you should ever write off anyone's opinion. In particular, those players that, that Derek mentioned there, the experience that they bring to the table. And like, Brian Lowen has finished hurling a long time and the modern nuances of the game and like the game is so different now. You, you could have played a club game two years ago and you go and play a club game now and the tactics being used are just so different. So in order, those players have their finger on the pulse. So you use their, you know, information, you use their knowledge for your team to prosper. I think it's an absolute no-brainer. So yeah. fair play to them. But I do, there would have been a lot of old school managers that just tell you four words followed by three, or four letters followed by three letters. And they could say to you, <laughs> they'd be fairly definitive about it. Is the second word off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 